Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. As academic registrar, it is both my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to Chelmsford Cathedral for this morning's Anglia Ruskin graduation ceremony. We've all gathered here today to celebrate the success of the class of 2019. Graduation ceremonies follow a tradition from the 15th century, and it is a tradition that has evolved since. Roughly translated, graduation means taking a step. And graduation symbolizes the move of the former student, now called a graduand, into a new role in society as a graduate, where they will use the skills and talents developed during their studies to contribute to the future advancement of society. Each graduate will cross the stage and shake hands with the Deputy Vice-Chancellor to symbolize their transition to this new role. We will applaud them for their success so far, but also in anticipation of the contribution we expect them to make to society in the future. At the conclusion of our ceremony, the Deputy Vice-Chancellor will formally admit all new graduates to the community of scholars. And as new members of that community, as the academic procession leaves the stage, the new graduates will join the procession, and that will bring our ceremony to a close. During proceedings, those graduating with higher research awards will have their hoods placed upon them by the Deputy Vice-Chancellor to indicate that they have attained the very highest levels of academic achievement. So with all the introductions over, it's now time for us to begin our formal proceedings. I hereby declare the ceremony to be in session, and I call upon the Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Professor Yvonne Barnett, to address you all. Deputy Vice-Chancellor. Distinguished guests, graduands, family and friends and colleagues, as Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Anglia Ruskin University, it is my very great pleasure to join you today at your graduation ceremony. Firstly, to all those graduating today, my congratulations on reaching this milestone and graduating from your chosen course. Today is a day of great celebration. It is an opportunity for each of you to take stock, reflect and celebrate your achievements to date, but to look forward to the exciting careers that stretch out in front of you. And whatever career you enter, you are the future. You now have the opportunity, the responsibility to embrace and promote change, to, to implement new ideas and new ways of working. The passion, energy and commitment that led you to undertake your ARU degree and gave you the strength and resilience to succeed in that task can now be applied to building your careers and realising your aspirations. Whether your future lies in education, health, social care, business law, science and technology or the arts, with your passion and your expertise, you really can now make a difference. Helping society address the challenges that we all face, nationally and globally. And we will have succeeded in our task if we have helped you to develop the skills, confidence and determination to influence and lead your professions, to promote change and to achieve your ambitions. As well as serving our students, we at ARU are fully committed to serving our region and the communities in which we are based. Economic development, social inclusion, business support, tackling, tackling health equalities, these are all fundamentally important elements of our mission. Transforming lives through innovative, inclusive and entrepreneurial education and research. And our reach extends well beyond the eastern region in which we are based. We are genuinely a global community of students and researchers. We attract students from over 170 countries and they will flourish with us uh, because they find a second home here. And our researchers too have worldwide research and impact. Our Vision and Eye Research Institute, for example, is leading life-changing research into the avoidance and management of diabetic retinopathy across South Asia. And colleagues in our Medical Technology Research Centre have recently won funding to develop accurate and affordable wearable technology to monitor the respiratory rates of newborn infants in refugee camps. So in our research, as in our education, we are having real tangible impact on people's lives 
and that's something of which we can all be proud. The last academic year has been very successful for ARU. We opened our new School of Medicine in Essex, opened law clinics in Cambridge and Chelmsford, became the UK's second largest university provider of degree apprenticeships. Uh, we were named one of the top 150 universities in the world for health education and were chosen to host the 2020 British Science Festival. Our researchers have won grants from world-class funders, including the European Research Council, Leverhulme Trust, Alzheimer's Society and Medical Research Council, and awards including a Churchill Fellowship, an OBE and a BAFTA a nomination. And our students too have won innumerable prizes, including the Victoria and Albert Illustration Award, Royal Television Society Award, and the Chartered Management Institute's Apprentice of the Year. But above all, we define our success as a university by the positive impact we have on the lives of our students and the communities that we serve. And for us to succeed, we will need your support as our newest alumni. Because the support we receive from our alumni and our friends really matters. Adding value to the education we provide our students and supporting our researchers to push boundaries. So please help us build links with your networks and your professions and spread the great word about this excellent university. Before I close, I would like to pay special tribute to your families and friends who have provided you with their constant support through your education. You and we owe them our sincere gratitude. I would like to acknowledge and thank my colleagues, the staff right across ARU for their tireless commitment and professionalism and their profound contribution to all aspects of your courses. So once again, my warm congratulations to you all. I do hope you enjoy your day. I wish you well, whatever your ARU takes, your degree takes you. And please do stay in touch. ARU is your university for life. And your success and our success are inextricably linked. Thank you all. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, thank you. So now we come to our main business for today's ceremony, the presentation of those receiving awards. And I now call upon Senior Pro Vice-Chancellor and Dean of Faculty, Professor Ruth Taylor, to come to the podium to present to the Deputy Vice-Chancellor graduates from the Faculty of Health, Education, Medicine and Social Care. Professor Taylor. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, it is my pleasure to present to you graduates from the Faculty of Health, Education, Medicine and Social Care. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Community Specialist Practitioner District Nursing, Selina Helen Julia Linton. <laughs> Helen Samantha Raitt. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Midwifery, also receiving the Dean's Award for Nursing and Midwifery, Charlotte Aldridge. <laughs> Francesca Adamson. <laughs> Poppy Barnes. Karen Bateman. <laughs> Shannon Bates. <laughs> Louisa Stephanie Baslinton. <laughs> Molly Bickers. Megan Blackwell. Elise Carrington.
Perpetual Chalaka. <laughs> Kaylee Ann Clark. <laughs> Jade Collins. <laughs> Sophie Copping. Anna Marie Doherty. <laughs> Mia Drain. <laughs> Rachel Etherington. <laughs> Linda Fitzgerald. <laughs> Lucy Claire Green. Jessica Ann Harris. <laughs> Michaela June Hawes. <laughs> Mia Hessel. <laughs> Sarah Hill. <laughs> Michelle Holden. Rebecca Holman Brown, <laughs> Rachel Housego, <laughs> Rebecca Hunter, <laughs> and also receiving the Provide Bursary, Francis Irving. Harriet Alice Johnson. <laughs> Mariam Kanji. <laughs> Elaine Ann Kara Nicholas. <laughs> Nicola Keefe. Megan Jane Neve Lancaster. <laughs> Chelsea Logie. <laughs> Georgia Haley Mackay. <laughs> Amber McCubbin. <laughs> Rebecca Mockery. Bethany Louise Morton. <laughs> Eden Ensaka Mukoko. <laughs> Sarah Damilola Odisanye. <laughs> Rachel Louise Organ. Victoria Pei. <laughs> Rebecca Piercy. <laughs> Helen Reed. <laughs> Jenny Shears. <laughs> Rachel Helen Shepherd. Lauren Sipos. Charlotte Thompson. Deborah Tidder. Michelle Louise Tublick. Charlie Walker. Emily Ward. Also receiving the Zeta Killick Award, Kira Wedlake. Yeah. 
Madeline Christina Clare West. Katie Witchell. Rachel Charlotte Wood. Charlotte Wren. For the award of Bachelor of Science Nursing Child, Chanel Toussaint MacLeod. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Nursing Child, Rebecca Barwick. <laughs> Kirsty Blake. <laughs> Jessica Fay Bone. <laughs> Ellie Mae Rose Bock. Bethany Michelle Campbell. <laughs> Tia Carey Smith. <laughs> Ashley Charlesworth. <laughs> Sophie Connor. <laughs> Emma Rachel Cullum. Hayley Claire Davy, <laughs> Holly Ellen Farr, <laughs> Lee Alice Fisher, <laughs> Laura Catherine Forster, <laughs> Chloe Foster. Hannah Gulam Gukan, <laughs> Elise Emily Granger, <laughs> Sarah J. Lani, <laughs> Abby Jordan Bland, <laughs> Harmony Jane King White. Amy Elizabeth Knowles. <laughs> Alicia Lawson. <laughs> Kirsty Lilly. <laughs> Leonie Jane McMeekin. <laughs> Abigail Matthews. Nicole Lynette Moyo. <laughs> Lexi Munt. <laughs> Emma Grace Nash. <laughs> Kaya Nethersall. <laughs> Katie Rose Payne. Katie Pika, <laughs> Lucy Joanne Purdy, <laughs> Jennifer Seaton, <laughs> Rebecca Louise Sudron, <laughs> Laura Tolland. Abby Tosh, <laughs> Vicky Louise Warren, <laughs> Emily Webb, <laughs> Claudia Wood, <laughs> Louise Youngs. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, that partially completes the list of graduates for me to present to you today.
Brilliant. Professor Taylor, thank you. We have many distinguished academic staff at Anglia Ruskin University, and I should now like to ask one of them, Karen Bartholomew, to come to the podium to offer a few words of reflection. Karen. Thank you. <laughs> Deputy Vice-Chancellor, honoured guests, ladies, gentlemen, graduates. It's a great honour to be here today to speak to you on this day of your graduation. ARU is extremely proud of all of its graduates and I'm extremely proud of all of you here. Many of you are not only receiving a degree today but also a professional qualification. A qualification that will allow you to work in your chosen profession. These qualifications have not come easily. For most of you, your journey to graduation will have held many challenges. You have been challenged to grow and develop new knowledge, and some of your ideas and values may have been challenged too. You will have had the challenge of meeting deadlines of assignments that made you wish you were doing something far less difficult. You will have had the challenge of meeting the, com the competing demands of family, friends and placement and the challenge of working in a health service where no two days are the same, and just when you think you know what you're doing, your placement changes and you have to start all over again. <laughs> However, you've made it to this day. You've demonstrated that you have the tenacity to stick with it. You have the ability to achieve the required academic standards, but you also have demonstrated a huge range of clinical skills and the ability to provide a high standard of care and met the challenges of clinical practice. These qualities and qualifications will open up a world of opportunities to you. As I look back at my own training, both as a nurse and a midwife, I can remember many of the experiences that I had that challenged me and changed me and made me the person that I am today. I vividly remember my first day on my first ward as a student nurse. I was completely and utterly and totally terrified of the sister. She called everybody by their last name, and if she heard you using somebody's first name, particularly the, the patients, you would receive the sharp edge of her tongue. Every morning, she used to count the thermometers. So every time she gave you one, she would count it and know that she'd given it to you and at the end of the day, she would count them back. If you broke one, she would make you put 50p in the ward fund. However, the care on her ward was second to none. <clears throat> the patients were wonderfully cared for and the place ran like clockwork. She taught me many things. She taught me the importance of doing the right thing at the right time and in the right way and the importance of respect. Respect for those in our care, respect for each other, and respect for the NHS's precious resources. I also remember a home birth I attended as a student midwife. The woman was clearly in labor and it wasn't long until the birth of the baby was imminent. I remember the way the midwife spoke to the woman in soft, encouraging tones. She never shouted or raised her voice, but whispered words of encouragement to the woman and kept her focus. It was one of the most amazing births I've ever been at, and I've always tried to bring some of that quiet calmness into the births that I attend. All of us entering nursing or midwifery did so because we had a desire to help and care for others. It's important that we remember that those that we care for and the significant role that they've played in our education Without them, we wouldn't be able to hone our clinical skills or develop our professional practice, and we owe them our gratitude for allowing, them to allowing us to participate in their care. In my role at AIU, I'm very lucky to be able to spend a significant amount of time in practice, where I'm able to meet a number of nurses and midwives, many of whom trained at AIU. These nurses and midwives are making a real difference to the lives of the people they care for. For many, their careers have also progressed and they are now leaders of our professions. 
alumni of ARU are now heads of midwifery, consultant midwives, practice development midwives, senior nurses, matrons and ward sisters. In fact, I'm pleased to say that many of the nursing and midwifery lecturers who are here today to, ce to celebrate your success are all also alumni of Anglia Ruskin, including myself. Therefore, as you set out on your path as a qualified practitioner, aim high. Make the most of the opportunities that are presented to you. Take risks and apply for the jobs that will stretch your abilities, but enable new growth and development. As a nurse and midwife, it's important to never stop learning, always gain new skills, and always gain more knowledge. And whilst not all of you will be the ne next, chief hosp next hospital chief exec or chief nurse, always maintain the high standards of care that I know that you are capable of. Keep your passion for nursing and midwifery. Remember that sometimes it's the smallest things that make the biggest difference. And always remember that we are proud of you. Congratulations, everybody. And the very best of luck in whatever you do next. Karen, thank you. We now continue with our main business at today's ceremony, the presentation of those receiving awards. So once again, I call upon Senior Pro Vice Chancellor and Dean of Faculty, Professor Ruth Taylor, to return to the podium to continue to present to the Deputy Vice Chancellor graduates from the Faculty of Health, Education, Medicine and Social Care. Professor Taylor. <coughs> Deputy Vice-Chancellor, it is my pleasure to continue the presentation of graduates from the Faculty of Health, Education, Medicine and Social Care. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Mental Health, Joy Agbonson. For the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours Nursing Mental Health, Ololede Adedeji. Elizabeth Badwo Idiaha. <laughs> William Anderson White. <laughs> Maud Anderson. <laughs> Christabel Asiedu. Esther Eva Barr. <laughs> Dale Balogun. <laughs> Sonny Chigumba. <laughs> Janet Chitungo. Adam Clark. <laughs> Benjamin Kweku Dadzi. <laughs> Martin Owusu Antwidarfor. <laughs> Penny Ann Day. Timibi Yvonne Egor. <laughs> Julius Chixin Iziagu. <laughs> Naomi Ford. <laughs> Phoebe Head. <laughs> Sonia Hibble. Abel Hazeri. <laughs> Isoye Andrew Isokariari. <laughs> Joylene Kane. <laughs> Ch 
Mervyn Larry King. Herbsum Hamusonde Mambo. Bethan Grace McElroy. Sandra Merritt. Stephanie Mweke. Comfort Senna OK. Nketchi Carolina Kioma. Precious Sibanda. Laura Steele. Amelia Ayansua Thompson. Sophie Ann Vaughan. Rosemary Chinedu Willey. Kafilat Adibawale Yusuf. For the award of Postgraduate Diploma Advanced Community Specialist Practitioner District Nursing, Laura Jane Cook. For the award of Master of Science Mental Health, Yvonne Serwa Asumadu. <laughs> Chidinma Charity Ogbuogu. <laughs> Janet Olianju. Alison Odette Stroud. For the award of Master of Science Advanced Midwifery Practice, Lauren Bannister. Laura Tiffany Clover. Amy Chloe Field. Grace Keiki Awu Okanzi. Cassandra Ose Nkrumah. Helen Petchenka. Maxine Rosemary Vassal. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, it is my pleasure to present to you those who have been awarded higher research degrees. For the award of professional doctorate with a thesis entitled, Assessment of Health-Related Quality of Life in Patients with Multiple Sclerosis in the Outpatient Setting, a Mixed Method Study, Helen Nicola Willis. of Doctor of Philosophy with a thesis entitled The Role of Culture and Beliefs in Healing and Ethnography within an Inner City Pentecostal Church, Jeffrey Omoateng. <laughs>
Deputy Vice-Chancellor, that completes the list of graduates for me to present to you today. Professor Taylor, thank you. Many congratulations to all our graduates. Very well done. Um, there'll be many uh, fellow graduates with whom you studied who, for one reason or another, aren't able to join us for today's ceremony. But we should celebrate their su success too. So can you please join me in the normal way in celebrating their success? We are now nearing the end of our ceremony, but first I would like to ask one of our wonderful new graduates, Mervyn King, to come to the podium to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of all of those receiving awards today. Mervyn. Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Dean of Faculty, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to offer the vote of thanks on behalf of all the students graduating today. Much to my annoyance growing up, the phrase back in my days was used by my grandparents as often as in famous staples like, because I told you so, and I'll give you something to cry about. <laughs> but as I stand on this stage today, childish irritation is replaced by immeasurable gratitude. Me being able to come to this university has been a vindication of their struggles and sacrifice. But however, spending three years in uni has a peculiar way of shifting that familiar perspective. Like many of us, I came to university wanting to meet my parents' expectations and become successful. So I internalized what has become a familiar routine. I stressed over problem sets. I worried over bad grades and not meeting deadlines. I even stressed over the lunchtime menu. I bemoaned how unfair this world was. I forgot the lessons that he and my parents had spent so many years trying to teach me. So in my lowest moments, when I called out to my grandparents for help and guidance, and they started the call by saying, back in my days, I hung up. On reflection, however, we do really live in an unfair world. Of all the people who could have come here today, we are the select few that were chosen. But as we worry about our personal failures here, we realize that we've been so conditioned by privilege and circumstance that we forget that we will eventually earn and achieve so much more than families whose only failure was living in an unequal broken system. To my great appreciation of this university, and to my grandmother, of course, they have managed to mold us to think and act beyond ourselves and to start thinking about what is possible for others. So once again, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Dean of Faculty, I thank you. And in future, when I hear my own children complain about the inconveniences in their world, I hope I'll have the strength to start the conversation by saying, back in my days. <laughs> To all our lecturers, the achievement today would not have been possible without your hard work. You pushed us further to achieve our potentials, thus transforming us into better human beings. To the clinical skills shooters, clinical practice mentors, we know how much you've sacrificed for us over the past three years. Your patience and perseverance has taught us important values and life lessons that we will carry with us throughout our adult life. To all the IT staff, library staff, and all the catering staff, your dedication has taught us the value of hard work, humility, and being better human beings in general. We thank you. I would also want to propose a very special thank you to a very special group of people from the Essex Partnership University Trust in a program called the Buddy Scheme. Some of these buddies have attended to eight watchers graduate, and to them I would like to say thank you. It truly has been a privilege. All this, me standing in front of you today, would not have been possible or it not for most of the important people in this room today, family. We had the motivation to finish because you're always there in the background, praising us and building us up. You taught us and made us understand the value of education. You taught us not to let the habits of our past stop us from this desire to change. 
You taught us that if we always do what we've always done, then we will be where we've always been. There are most of us in this room that nobody thought will be graduating in this cathedral today, but you drew them to this place today because you wanted them to be a new me, a new attitude, a new mind, and a new life. Thank you for being the support that held us up for the last three years. And to my fellow graduates, a moving real testament that hard work works. What separates us from the rest is transformation, the possibility of change, the desire to evolve into higher, better expressions of ourselves. What we now have is the audacity of hope, a new life, a new attitude, a new us. It is not the movement of the clock that produces the newness of life, it is the movement in our minds. Against all odds, we defy the urge to quit, and three years down the line, we are all here as winners. Congratulations, class of 2019, thank you. Mervyn, thank you, and very well done. I now call for one final time on the Deputy Vice-Chancellor to address the new graduates. Deputy Vice-Chancellor. And now, will all those who have been presented to me here on stage please stand. As Deputy Vice-Chancellor of Anglia Ruskin University, I hereby admit you to the degrees, diplomas and awards for which you have been presented to me today. As a member now of the community of scholars, take all that you have learned into society and uphold the values of freedom of thought and scholarship. Our warmest congratulations to you all. And that brings us to the end of the ceremony, and I hereby declare proceedings closed. Can I now ask everyone to stand for the academic procession?